Welcome to my Days of Our Lives official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Days of Our Lives spoilers for Tuesday, July 9th, show that Gabby Hernandez de Mera justified EJ de Mera's public expose, stating that Eric Brady deserved to know the truth about Jude Brady. Stefan de Mera claimed that Gabby was simply trying to stick it to EJ, but Gabby insisted on getting what he deserved. Gabby wanted to go home and forget about it, but Stefan maintained they couldn't because Gabby had left him to deal with the consequences of her actions. Nicole DiMera described the press conference story at the airport, including how Gabby exposed Jude's paternity. Eric also discovered that Sloan Peterson tampered with all of the DNA test results and that EJ remained silent after learning the truth. Nicole handed over Jude for a heartfelt father-son reunion before explaining that EJ believed they'd reunite if they knew Eric was the father. Eric recognized he couldn't take the job in Paris just now, so he cancelled his move and decided to stay in Salem. On Tuesday's Days episode, Holly Jonas overheard some of EJ's rant and questioned what was going on. Holly admitted to being confused after EJ revealed all of the paternity problems. Holly was angry with EJ for causing Eric and Nicole misery, but she couldn't blame him because she'd lied so desperately. Stefan met with EJ again at one point and tried to explain how he didn't intend for any of this to happen, but EJ insisted that the damage had already been done and remained vengeful. When Nicole returned home later, EJ hoped they could sort things out. Instead, Nicole removed her wedding ring set and stated her desire for a divorce. Back with Eric, he met Gabby in the town square and thanked her for doing the right thing. Gabby appeared pleased with herself and said she owed Eric one because she kept her bone marrow for Rachel Black until she received an immunity bargain. Next on Tuesday's DOL show, Teresa Donovan and Brady Black waited for Tate Black at the townhouse, where Teresa complained about Brady convincing Alex Kiriaki she was a gold digger. Brady revealed his theory about the briefcase in Greece, but he later apologized for speculating because Teresa claimed to be a woman of integrity now. Tate offered Aaron Green his driver's license to use as ID for lacrosse camp, saying he told the DMV he had misplaced it and they would send him a replacement. On Tuesday's episode of Days, Alex appeared and claimed to know what the lads were up to, which caused Tate and Aaron to panic temporarily. Fortunately, it was a false alarm since Alex simply assumed Tate was hooking Aaron up with a bogus ID. Alex had many of those when he was younger, so he resolved not to reveal the truth. When Tate returned to the townhouse, he told Brady and Teresa that they did not need to transport him to the airport. Teresa insisted, but Alex called her home to sign the prenuptial agreement since the lawyers needed it done immediately now. Brady ended up letting Aaron drive Tate, which allowed Aaron to catch his trip to New York, leaving an excited Tate and Holly to plan their summer together. On Tuesday's episode of Days, Brady was astonished when Eric arrived at the townhouse with Jude, as he was meant to be in Paris. Eric said he assumed Brady would want to meet his nephew, which perplexed Brady. According to Days of Our Lives spoilers, Eric will continue to reconnect with Jude and prepare a new chapter, so stay tuned for predictions on Nicole's future departure and updates on how it will affect things. Teresa expressed her love for Alex, but she saw Justin's fears and did not blame him for being doubtful. I know that my history has a lot of black marks, Teresa said. Bonnie rolled her eyes at the euphemism. Teresa renewed her interest in Alex before learning that he was to inherit a wealth. As Teresa described how she and Alex discovered their mutual attraction in Greece, Alex's thoughts drifted to Brady's interpretation of how Teresa might have opened the briefcase. As Teresa claimed to be as astonished as everyone else when the truth about Alex's parentage was revealed, Alex realized that if Teresa had opened the suitcase, she had been manipulating him since. Alex was having doubts in his thoughts. Teresa claimed that Alex trusted her. She grasped Alex's face in her hands and asked, Alex, do you trust me? Alex told Teresa that he trusted her, which was why he asked her to be his wife. Teresa asked Alex whether he wanted her to sign a prenuptial agreement. Before he could respond, Teresa proclaimed, Because I think I should. Bonnie responded, I didn't see that coming. Teresa explained that she was tired of people thinking negatively about her. Teresa, doe-eyed, told Alex that she was aware that some marriages did not work out and that he should protect himself. Teresa directed Justin to draft the paperwork. 
Tate, who was in the Brady pub, contacted Holly, who was in the living room of the DeMera estate. Tate asked Holly whether she still wanted to run away with him. With Tate being transported off to lacrosse camp and Holly being double super grounded, Holly wondered how they could make an escape. Tate told Holly that he had a plan. Would you say it's better than the prom plan? Holly teased Tate. Tate implored Holly to trust him. I do trust you, Holly said, smiling. Tate told Holly to call him when it was safe to speak. They ended the call. Holly turned to find Rachel standing at the doorway. Holly asked Rachel if she wanted to see a movie. Rachel gave an answer, not really, but I do want to know what you're plotting with my brother. Holly revealed that she wanted to be with Tate, but their parents wanted to keep them apart. Holly asked Rachel not to say anything. Rachel claimed she didn't want to go into trouble. She took up the phone to call Nicole. Holly snatched Rachel's cell phone. You can't! Holly exclaimed. Rachel took her phone back. Holly pleaded with Rachel not to tell. I'll do anything, Holly exclaimed. Rachel was intrigued. Like, what? What's in it for me? Rachel asked. Holly said that Rachel would be a hero to Tate after everything he had just gone through. Holly also stated that she would never confront Rachel for anything. Holly explained that Rachel was old enough to comprehend Tate and Holly's desire to be together and that Holly needed Rachel's support. Holly had offered to give Rachel some vanilla orchid, her favorite perfume, which Rachel had enjoyed. So, like a bribe, right? Rachel asked. Holly leaned down to Rachel's eye level. It would be a gift for being such a good friend. Can I count on you? Holly asked. Before Rachel could respond, Holly looked up and noticed Brady had entered the room. Hi. What are you two talking about? Brady asked suspiciously. Holly stood up and stated, nothing important. We were just discussing perfumes. Okay, Rachel? Rachel went along with Holly, but Brady was skeptical. He stated that the debate appeared to be more intense than just regarding scents. Holly lied to Brady, saying Rachel had wanted to sample some vanilla orchid, but she wasn't sure Kristen would approve. Brady purchased it. He told Holly and Rachel that he didn't believe Kristen would object, but the topic of perfumes would have to wait. Brady said that he was come to pick up Rachel and take her to watch fireworks. Rachel dashed off to get some glow sticks before they departed. Brady praised Holly for hanging around with Rachel. Holly expressed anxiety that Kristen, or any mother, would not trust her at that moment. Brady told Holly that he wished things had turned out differently after the prom, but he also thought it was inappropriate that Tate and Holly had sneaked off to the Salem Inn. Brady informed Holly about the lacrosse camp, and Brady and Teresa thought it would be a good idea for Tate and Holly to spend some time apart. Brady informed Holly that they might reconsider the matter once Tate returned. Brady reminded Holly that if she and Tate could demonstrate trustworthiness, their final year of high school may be quite different. Aaron joined Tate at the Brady pub Tate showed him the lacrosse camp brochure. Aaron admired the camp but regretted that he couldn't afford it. That's why it's a good thing my dad is paying for me to go, Tate told the audience. Aaron was puzzled. Tate laid detailed his plan for Aaron to go to the camp in Tate's place, allowing Tate and Holly to escape together. Tate added that the camp did not allow guests, so his parents couldn't stop by. Tate stated that he will switch off the tracking app on his phone. Tate only needed someone to take his position. Tate stated that Aaron would benefit from this opportunity because he enjoyed and excelled at lacrosse. Aaron hesitated. Tate stated that if Aaron had the prestigious training, colleges would be throwing scholarships at him. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.